Some sequels, prequels, reboots, and spin-offs prove worthwhile. Others don't. Welcome to my world, bitch! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst spin-off movies. Gentlemen, good to see you. Number 10, Evan Almighty. Do you want to explain to yourself, Congressman, what is going on? Oh, these are birds. It doesn't sound like a bad idea. After his small but memorable part in Bruce Almighty, I'm sorry, I seem to have something stuck in my heart. Somebody get him some water, please. Steve Carell became a bankable movie star. So why not build a sequel around his character? Mm, 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 mm. But maybe add an arc and a beard. No. And everybody loves animals, right? But the biggest blender here is the $175 million price tag. Even godlike powers can't save you from that kind of stupidity. I think we can walk from here. Number 9. Hannibal Rising The origins of Hannibal Lecter with a screenplay by author Thomas Harris sound like a slam dunk. And it should have been. Sure, it's hard to top Anthony Hopkins, Jodie Foster, and Fava Beans. But the other films in the franchise did at least modestly well. However, this entry's over-pretentious and unimaginative story doesn't even come close. Even worse, this clunker breaks the golden rule of movies. It's painfully boring. Answer me this. Would you have fed me to your little sister because you loved her? Yes. Number 8. Alien vs. Predator Two iconic sci-fi series with terrifying alien species fused together into one mega franchise. It worked in comics and video games. Why not on the big screen? We'll tell you why. Because Hollywood thinks we need one of those species to be the good guys. Underdeveloped characters and excruciatingly stilted dialogue don't help either. This whole thing was a trap. But clearly someone saw it. It made hundreds of millions at the box office and even spawned its own sequel. <laughs> Number 7. Freddy vs. Jason a Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th form a terrifying team based on the faces alone. But let's be real, these worn out villains needed a reboot. Perhaps a mano a mano battle could at least breathe new life into them? Or perhaps not. Why does it always have to be versus anyway? Why couldn't it be Freddy and Jason? Then the teenage corpses could really pile up. Number 6. American Pie Presents Bandcamp. Has anyone ever said, hey, that direct-to-DVD sequel was really worth seeing? The answer to that would be a resounding no. And a flick about the infamous American Pie Bandcamp is in its own league of awfulness. Oh my, you're not a stifler. Yeah, I'm Steve's brother Matt. There are two stiflers? Yes, sir! Mimicking sex comedy series like Porky's and Meatballs, the American Pie franchise proceeded with cut-rate sequels that had all new casts and very little to do with their source material. The results were about the same. <laughs> Number 5. Caravan of Courage, an Ewok Adventure We can't decide what's worse, direct-to-DVD or made-for-TV. But either way, anything in the Star Wars canon must tread lightly. Need we remind you of Jar Jar? Or the Christmas special? Come on, Mala, let's see a little smile. There were actually two Ewok TV movies in the 80s, and they should have been kick-ass stepbrothers of the Star Wars saga. But instead, they just featured a lot of scenes like these. We came on a Star Cruiser and we crashed. We crashed? Star Cruiser? <laughs> Number 4. Electra. Elektra is at best a second-tier character in the Marvel Universe. Also, we're not even going to bother with a spoiler alert here because we're saving you time, but she dies in Daredevil. So to give her a spin-off is all kinds of ridiculous. Actually, that's not fair. She's Daredevil's brightest spot, but in Elektra, she's nothing more than a brooding, self-serious bore in red leather pants. They're not for you. I want to learn how to defend myself. 
They're offensive weapons. They're for killing. Can you use them? I don't want you to be like me. I do. Number three, Son of the Mask. You did this to me. Combine the premise of The Mask with the box office drawing power of Jamie Kennedy. Jim Carrey turned down $10 million to reprise his role as Stanley Ipkiss. That should have been the end of that. But Kennedy took his place and was so attacked in the reviews, he made a documentary based on the experience. Don't you just love Halloween? We think the takeaway here is that sequels to Jim Carrey movies really require Jim Carrey. This is the part where you boogie. This is the part where you dance. Number two, Supergirl. Lucy Lee, this is Linda Lane. No, it isn't. What? She's Linda Lee and I'm Lucy Lane. By the time this was released, Superman fans probably wished there was a real Man of Steel to speed fly the world back to a time when the movies didn't suck. Supergirl was given the daunting task of reviving the brand, but her doe-eyed cheesy treatment of the story just wasn't worthy of the cape, and she collected about a tenth of the box office returns of her cousin. He's your cousin? Yes. I shouldn't be telling you this, though. I'm here on Wait a minute. Wait one minute. I mean, you can do the whole number, leap tall buildings with a single bound? You can look right through things? Yes. Bend steel bars? Yes. Whoa. Number one, Catwoman. There have been many memorable interpretations of this beloved she-villain over the years. This is one of them, but that's not a compliment. Catnip. Everyone with an internet connection knew this project was doomed the day the first costume pic surfaced. But Halle Berry had just won an Oscar, so it took something special to earn this flick its place as one of the worst films in Hollywood history. A girl like me lands on her feet. Do you agree or disagree with our list? Which movie spin-offs would you put in your list of all-time stinkers? Be sure to let us know and subscribe to WatchMojo.com for more entertaining top tens. You hear that? It's called silence. Thanks for the party.